I'm told I have five minutes left. So I'm not going to go into great details about African unity. I want to um, talk about one of the last major, in pro as big a challenge as health. And new Pan-African organizing about saving the planet Earth. About how capitalism is leading to the destruction of the planet Earth. We are following every day the information of floods and drought. And we followed the Copenhagen Co Conference in 2009 and the debate about two degrees Celsius. Two degrees Celsius at the international level means four or five degrees Celsius for Africans. It's leading to fundamental changes in life for Africa in terms of the land, desertification, and other forms of distress for the African peoples. So one of the fundamental Pan-African organizations that has been developed is called the Pan-African Justice Climate Justice Alliance. The Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance is saying, why are we concerned about the fossil fuel future? Is it not more important to leave the oil in the ground so we can have a planet in the 21st century? So the, the challenges of doing research as Pan-Africanism of how to save the planet moves the question of Pan-Africanism from questions about state power to the future, not just of Africans, but to the future of humanity. Tajuddin's Abdul Rahim and Pan-Africanists of that generation, Philippe Wamba, they understood that we could not deal with environmental justice as an intellectual question, environmental justice must come from concrete political organizing against the oil companies and those who were destroying the African continent. I won't spend time talking about African resources. I want to conclude by talking about Pan-Africanism and the African diaspora. That in every part of the world, African peoples live in multi-ethnic, multilingual, multi-religious, multi-racial society. And it is because of the way in which Africans are inserted in the world that Africans must develop ideas about human dignity that transcends the ideas of race. So that the ideas of race, which predisposes us towards European categories of hierarchy, will put African people, Native American people, at the bottom. So Pan-Africanism of the next generation must be able to raise the question about dignity of all peoples in Latin America. In a country such as Brazil, Brazil is going to Africa today to say it is assisting Africans in what they call development. And the Brazilian government has announced plans in the context of BRICS to have major initiatives for developing universities in Africa. And we have to ask ourselves, how can Brazil assist Africa and black people in Africa when the African people in Brazil do not have access to these resources? The issues of the African descendants in Latin America, that issue will be the major issue for the 21st century. These were the forces that were behind the World Conference Against Racism. And the program of action of the World Conference Against Racism in 2001 laid the agenda for how to reconstruct the educational institutions for the 21st century. They don't want to hear about World Conference Against Racism. Because the real conference against racism said that the transatlantic slave trade Slavery and colonialism constituted a crime against humanity. And if we talk about the constitution of a crime against humanity, then we must talk about redress. And the redress the Pan-African movement talks about is repair, reparations. Whether we talk about reparations in the context of sending back cultural artifacts, or we said, talk about reparations in the context of how we repair the institutions where we live and work. 
Now, some of my brothers and sisters will put a monetary value on reparations. That is, the reparations movement is as broad as the Pan-African movement. Different strides. From where I stand in the Pan-African movement, Africa is too rich to talk about monetary reparations. Because if we only ask the African young people to organize around returning the resources of Africa that are lodged in foreign banks, we have billions of dollars that we return to Africa. And I do not believe that we can quantify an amount of money for the destruction of African lives during the slave trade. So for me, the reparations that we are talking about is repairing the human spirit, repairing the context of knowledge, repairing the context of relations between human beings. And it is this reparations that will unleash a retreat from the Eurocentric ideas of development, of catching up with Europe. When people tell me about development, I run the other way. Because Africa doesn't want to develop. We want to transform Africa. We want to transform the world. We want to transform the relations between human beings and transform capitalism. Let me conclude by saying that Pan-Africanism requires a new concept of citizenship, world citizenship, and that we must move away from all forms of xenophobia, differences, and oppression. How could Africans fight to support the South African liberation and after fighting to support South African liberation, South Africa uh, unleashed xenophobia against other Africans so that they mobilized with the police to attack Somalis and other Africans. We have to raise our voices against those forms of xenophobia. We have to raise our voices against African leaders that try to divide the African peoples. How could it be that in 2011, the African Union could choose as a chairperson the president of Equatorial Guinea? I hope that this conference will not end without making a statement about this man who is a chairperson of Equatorial Guinea, that we will distance ourselves and separate ourselves from such a person. I also cannot end this discussion without discussing the question of how the question of same-sex relationship is being politicized in Africa to divert the attention of the African people from challenging exploitation. All over Africa, we have governments and leaders who are manipulating homophobic ideas so that people who are from fluid sexual sexualities are being attacked and threatened with death. And Pan-Africanists are silent about these questions. Pan-Africanists cannot have their humanity when the, the humanity of others are de de denied. As the great philosopher Torrance, African philosopher said, I am human and nothing human is alien to me. Pan-Africanism in the 21st century of the new generation must seek to find that humanity. And I want to conclude with the statement of Sheikh Anta Diop. Today, each group of people armed with the rediscovered or reinformed cultural identity has arrived at the threshold of post-industrial era. I want to underline post-industrial era. An atavistic but vigilant African optimism inclines us to wish that all nations join hands in order to build a planetary civilization instead of sinking into barbarism. Thank you very much.